to wit to woo. <laughs> it's me. I'm back here with some, a parliament of owls. Um, and these little guys are brooches or pinbacks that you can pin on your coat, on your autumn coat, or on your bag or anywhere really. You could even leave off the pin back and just have them on a hang hanging uh, thread. So it really is up to you. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to make these. I'm going to take you through step by step how I do it. Um, for this one, if you want my pattern, then I will leave a description down in the description box. And for a very small fee, you'll be able to get that from my Etsy shop. Um, I'm sure you may be able to concoct your own if you wanted to. Uh, but if you want to do the exact one that I'm doing here, then the pattern is in my Etsy, Etsy shop. It's really not expensive and it does help towards um, making videos and making more things. And I do quite a lot of free patterns on this channel. So this one is just one that I'm asking that you might want to contribute to a little bit if you want to make the same one that I'm making. Otherwise, you can make your own pattern up and just use the techniques that I've got here. Um, so without further ado, let's get into making. So here are the things that you're going to need in order to make your owl brooch. You won't need all of this felt, but you will need a selection of about four, four different colors. You don't have to do four, you could maybe get away with three. Uh, but if you want to make it very detailed in the same way that I make mine, then you'll probably need about four different colors. I like to work in 100% wool felt because when I'm putting in this much effort, including embroidery and things, then I want to do it on the best material that I can so that it will last a long time. Um, it also feels really nice to work with 100% wool felt. It's not, it's not got the same feel as acrylic felt. Um, it just the, the needle just glides through it, which makes it a dream to work with. So, I personally would recommend 100% wool felt. Obviously, if you haven't got it, you can do it with whichever felt you like. My personal preference, as I say is the 100% wool felt. Uh, you can get a wool felt blend, which is also pretty good as well, but I don't suggest you try and do it with the really cheap acrylic felt. Um, only for the fact is you're not going to get the same finish that you probably like. Okay, so what I'm going to go through is all the things that I have in front of me on the desk. So I've got four different colours of felt. I've got a pair of very sharp scissors for cutting out my felt pieces. I've got my pattern pieces here. If you haven't got the pattern piece, the pattern piece is available for a very small fee on my Etsy shop. And I will leave the link in the description so that you can go and grab hold of that. It's got some detailed photos and everything. It's a PDF file that you can download that will help you. Uh, but you'll you'll see everything that I do on screen at the minute. So make sure you cut them out. I like to cut them out on acetate. That means that if I want to cut more than one, they'll last longer. Obviously I do make more than one. So mine are on something that's going to last me a long time. Um, the other things that you'll need, you need some sewing needles. This is my little collection of sewing needles. Um, you probably only need one or two with different heads on different size heads. So whatever you have that can fit two strands of embroidery thread and, um, and also something a little thicker that you might need um, for decoration purposes. It's up to you, but that's what I have there. A means of transferring the pattern onto the felt. I swear by these. This is a, a Madeira Magic pen and it works really well on most of my felt. If I have some really dark felt, then I tend to go with a white pen. 
the Sigma Broad is the one that I am using at the minute. You could also use uh, the Sakura ones, the Jelly Rolls, but that's the one that I use. You have to be kind of careful because it's it, this one fades. So this, um, it's it's got two ends. I use a thicker end just because it goes on to felt better. And um, yeah, use that to transfer with all that if it's a really dark, maybe that dark for, um, felt there, I might have to use a white to transfer my um, pattern onto. And basically you just draw around your pattern pieces. You don't have to put it in a specific way because as you know, felt has no grain, so it doesn't really worry about anything like that. Um, I have got a small pair of embroidery scissors just for when I'm cutting threads. It's easier to handle than these uh, quite hefty boys. So this is um, just for ease. I have got on my options list. Actually, no, these are not options. Uh, these are just a selection of threads to match the felt so that I can stitch them together. This one is an option. It's um, on some of my owls and I'll show you some of them more. You've probably seen some of them in the beginning of this. Um, the middle of the owl eye, I tend to stitch some um, thread in just to give it a little bit of definition. But that we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, you will need pin back. This size pin back, let's have a little look at the size of it. It is a one inch, just over one inch pin back. I don't know what that is in centimetres, but I'm sure you'll be able to find something similar. Um, they come in packs generally, so you can get from as small as a pack of 10. So if you thought about making these for friends, then the pack of 10 probably do you. I buy them in the hundreds because I tend to make a lot. So um, it's cheaper, obviously, if you buy bigger in bulk, but you know, that, that is just really simple and really not expensive. The other thing you will need, if you're going to do my way now, these are four millimeter black brads. If you can see, they've got the little bit that comes apart at the back there. And these I use for the pupils of my owl eyes. Um, it's the way that I make them with these. Now, if you don't have these, small button, small bead, um, even just like a, a a, front, a French knot instead of doing this could work. I'm just showing you what I use so that you, if you have these things, you can get them. If you don't, we can get the ways around it, okay? Another option that I have is when I'm putting my brads in, so if I've got brads, I have this awl, which I use to make a hole inside the the eye so that I can thread these through easily. Um, you can push them through with brute force and ignorance, but I don't recommend it because it could rep, rep, um, rip your felt and you don't really want to do that because seriously, you don't want to waste felt, especially if it's the wool felt because it's a tad more expensive. So you want to keep things together as much as possible. But yeah, that's your list of things that you're going to need. And now what I'm going to do is to transfer the pattern pieces onto my felt and I'll show you briefly how I do that. Okay, so I'm going to transfer my pattern piece onto my felt now. I've decided that this one is going to be the contrast and this one is going to be the front of the owl head. We need two of these, one of them in each of the felts. So for the first one, literally, oh, get my thicker end because it's easier to use. Bring you down a little bit. So I'm literally, this is what I do. This pan is a dream because it fades um, in the air or if you add a little bit of water to it, it will fade as well. And then take my sharp scissors, cut it out. Try 
try to be as accurate as you can otherwise you'll find that the pieces won't match up So this is going to be the front piece for my owl. So I've cut that one out. Now just to show you the different one, because my pen won't show up on here, what I use is this white pen. You have to be fairly careful. You don't want to put too much on there. So this one won't fade so you're just going to have to be a little more um, careful with it you can see that that's transferred on there really nicely there are other ways of transferring onto your felt this is just the way that I like to use um, and I can only show you my way <laughs> but if you find a different way and you want to do it some, some different uh, way to this or you've got a different transfer method please you know just go for it you could there are many ways that you can do it and I'm sure if you've learned a specific way that you want to do then go ahead and transfer it however you like okay so now I should have a back and a front that match and I do so what you want to do now is to in the contrast thread the back thread you need to cut out transfer and cut out the top owl head piece which is this one and then on the other two bits go with a lighter color for the out outer and have two eye outers that's what you transfer onto there and on this one you want to cut out two of the smaller circles for the inners you need very little of this piece this is what i'm saying you can make quite a few if you buy a sheet four sheets of the felt you can get quite a few owls out of this which would be great gifts so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and transfer and cut out all my pieces and i'll be back with you in a tick okay so i've stitched all around that bottom edge that bit will all be enclosed inside so don't worry about the back at all uh, the next thing we need to do is to have a look at attaching the eyes and um, the beak now i have a very cheeky method of this um, it's not cheeky really but it just keeps things in place and especially when you're putting the brads through them i have this it is called Aileen's Felt and Foam Tacky Glue. Now I only ever use this just to position things or to keep things in place. So I put the very smallest amount onto my um, felt piece and put it in the center. Again, very small amount into the center. And just while I'm sewing this on, a very tiny little piece of that goes onto the beak just to hold it in place while I stitch around it. Okay, so that's my little sneaky, sneaky, um, stitchy treat for you if you have some of that. If you don't, don't worry. There is another brand um, that's also good. That's a beacon felt glue. I use both of these, but this one's the one I'm using at the moment because it's handy and um, has quite a bit in it okay so look at the position of your eyes on your piece make sure that you've got fairly symmetrical it doesn't have to be completely symmetrical once you're happy with that you can either just continue to stitch it in or if you want to do the sneaky method tiny dab of glue the smallest amount this will just hold it in place for you while you stitch around it and you will thank me for it later <laughs> um, so these are all in place now and I have threaded up a needle two strands again two strands of 
this colour. You can pick whichever you like. As I say, I like to do uh, something that doesn't quite match so that I can see my stitches. But if you don't, find something that matches your thread. And literally, we're going to go in to the edge there. Just pick a spot. It doesn't really matter where you start. And we're going right close to the edge of the felt. And then bringing it back out a little bit further along. So we're back to stab stitch. There are only three stitches in this whole project that you need to know. Um, so it's, it's really simple. All of them are simple stitches. The only tricky one that's not really tricky is uh, the French knot. But I will show you how I do that as well. So I'm going to stitch around this. I'm going to stitch around this. And I'm going to stitch around the beak. And then I will be back and we'll go on to the next part. Okay, so stitch you round, stitch you round, stitch you round. Okay, so we have stitched around, stitched around and stitched around. These two are still just tacked in, but in a moment, that's all going to change. Um, what we're going to do now is put the brads in. Now, this is where the all comes in. Obviously, if you want to do a stitch, that's perfectly fine as well. I just like the look of the brads in the piece and I'm just making a hole with the awl through all three, one, two, three, three layers of felt. Tiny little hole there you can see. Literally pop my brad in and then open up its prongs at the back. And that's one eyeball in. Back in again with the other one. Careful that you don't stab into your finger because these are really sharp. And made myself a hole. Insert my brad. Open up the prongs. Nice and firm and secure. And now your owl has his eye, his pupils and his eyes. The next thing we're going to do still working on the eyes is this is where I bring in my metallic thread. Now, if you don't want to use this or you want to just use different thread or you want to use a contrasting thread, be my guest. This is just something that I like to do because I just think it adds a little something to the owl. Also, I am a magpie. As you know, if you've watched any of my videos, you will know I always have a little bit of glitz is the only problem with the metallic thread it does separate out um, so you can make um, finer thread if you want to but I quite like using the whole thing Let's see if we can hold it together just to thread it through my sewing teachers say you needle the thread you don't thread the needle and it's still not working. <laughs> this is all the case. On camera, everything goes weird. So bear with. I will get this threaded. See, it's tricksy because it wants to separate out. I'm going to thread it and be back. Okay, I have defeated the thread. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a long stitch. I'm going to start at the top of the pupil of the eye and I'm going to take it just to where that thread is there, make a long stitch. It's going to be like um, just eight prongs basically. So you want to go, it's like a compass really, you want to go north, then northwest. <laughs> like my compassy references here. Then west, then southwest. <laughs> you see, it just adds a little bit of shine to his eye. When I'm drawing or painting owls, I always tend to add in the metallic part of this as well, just to give it a bit of zing. Just be careful where you're poking that needle out. You don't poke your thumb. And go back. 
down to the bottom now. Then we're going southeast. <laughs> Quite proud of my compassy references. We are going east. You don't have to be as exact as this. You could just add in whichever bits you like. I just like the fact that it, it kind of finishes it off a bit. So there you've got a little bit of shine going on. I'm just going to take that at the back there, wrap it around a couple of times, put it tight and fasten it off, snip it off. I'm going to do the same on the other eye and then I'll be back. Okay. So now we have stitched a detail on our eyes. Now we're going to have a little look at the beak and this will take a couple of French knots. So I'm going to get two strands of my embroidery thread in a contrasting colour. Little knot in the bottom. And so how I do a French knot, I come up, pull it all the way through, take you down to my paradise city. No, I'm not going to sing. Um, wrap it round the needle three times, hold on to the thread, hold it back in, hold it until it goes in. Okay, let's do it again. So we go up, and I'm going to get my needle, put it close, wrap it round three times, take it back into nearly where it came out, hold that thread, and then pull it. And you've got two little French knots on his beak. Okay, so we can finish that one off, wrap it around, pull it through, snip it off. I'm going to make this a one thread now. So I'm going to take this very light blue thread. And instead of two threads, I'm going to just need one thread of this. Just snip off a length. Grab off one thread threading my needle off camera <laughs> and then put a knot in it's knotted and i'm just going to add some detail onto the top of the head part now so i'm going to start at the bottom i'm doing little seed stitches and it's just to give the illusion maybe of feathers i don't know but I'm not going to be too precious about it. Lots of just going in and going out again. <laughs> just to add some detail in. I can go off at a slight angle as well. That just adds to the charm. <laughs> so, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this centre section up with these little seed stitches and kind of go in between them for the next row you can make them a little bit bigger if you want to but it just adds some texture a little bit of interest and looks a little bit like feathers And you can see it doesn't take too long to get this together. Go off at an angle there, following around that curve. Following around that curve. It's a really simple stitch. And so those are all the three stitches that you need to know. The stab stitch or over stitch. The um, 
French knot and this little seed stitch that just gives some detail. The closer these are together you can do embroidery pieces with um, lots of these to give direction to a piece. It's a bit like a satin stitch I suppose but a bit more random. Okay so I'm going to call that done, put it in the back, wrap it around, pull it into a knot. That's done. Okay, next piece. Okay, so now we come to put these pieces onto this piece. If you remember, this piece is still open. What we're going to do is we're going to match it up with the base piece, like so. Now at this point, I sometimes use clips just to hold it in place, just to keep the bits from slipping because you've got to try and be careful about how this stitches around, especially this top end. Once you've got this in place, you don't really need a clip anymore. So I've gone with a matchy matchy thread for this. This is going to go all the way around your owl head and we're going to start at this point here where, where that top owl head piece starts as well. So I'm going in there, closing it together and what we're going to do is we're going to take this through all the three layers because you've got three layers of stitches there three layers of felt should i say and you want to take your stitch it's just an over stitch again all the way through literally going into the back coming out the front you don't want to come out too far otherwise your stitches will be too big so it's tiny little stitches but making sure that you are catching all of those felts within your stitch and you pull it together, it kind of the two other edges close around, which is quite nice. You can see, you can very barely see those stitches, but if I come up close, you can probably see them there. And I am going to go all the way around my owl head with this stitch until I get to about here. So I'm going to leave myself about an inch, inch and a half gap. Um, if you don't want to pad yours out, you could put a piece of cardboard in the middle of this, just a small piece, and then you could have like a flat brooch. I myself quite like a little bit of dimension, so I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in just to give it a little bit of polyfill stuffing, just to give it some dimension. Um, so I'm going to go all the way around to about there and I'll be back. Okay, so I've stopped there. I've got some of this polyfill. I've also got a little chopstick. And I'm just going to insert into that little gap some of this polyfill to give it a little bit of a dimension. You don't want to overstuff it. You just want to put enough in, take it up into his, I don't know what those feathery bits on the top of the head are, they're not ears, or maybe they are ears, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, you want to just enough just to give it some dimension. If you don't want to do this as I said, you could just put a little bit of cardboard in or something or um, fabric stiffener, you know, the really thick fabric stiffener, just to um, to give it some stability. Oh, that's enough, and now I'm just going to finish it off. I'm stitching around the edge again. You can see I've gone all the way around my stitches. I'm just going to close up this gap now. Close it up. Just a few 
few more stitches and we'll be at the end. Taking it right up to there, pulling it close. So I go in at the back, wrap it round a couple of times, pull it up. I'm just going to take that thread and lose it inside and then snip it off close to the belt. So now we've got our um, owl head. Now we need to make it into a pin back. So we need to find our pin back, open it out. Generally open it out with the closure part on the left hand side and the other part on the right hand side. Not quite sure what's on there. Little mark, doesn't really matter. Okay, so couple of threads. And I've got a couple here actually, I'll do it in the dark blue because we don't want to make a feature of this. This is just to blend in. So it's an idea to find a, a thread that matches the backing of your owl. Okay, just thread up my needle. There we go. Now I'm not going to put a knot in it because I want to try and knot it in situ and I'll show you what I mean. So I take it in from the side and go through that hole there and pull it but don't pull the thread all the way out. Then I go in, very gently pull that together just to hold it. And I'm going to knot it at this point, so wrap my thread around twice and just pull it and that should secure that. And then I do about, I don't know, about three or four rounds into each bit. So I'll do three into this bit, it's double thread as well. And then we're in the centre, so I'm taking it down, back out again. Do that three times. Then I'm going to go in and come out at the top again. Then I'm going to go three more times into this hole. You can do more if you like. Three or four, doesn't really matter. It's fairly secure. And the last one, that top one there. So taking it back in to the centre and out there. When you are positioning your bar back, uh, you don't want to put it right bang in the middle because your cat will cat owl will hang funnily. Um, so if you pop it towards the top but not right at the top, then it will hang hang down quite well. So you want to be not in the centre of the back but somewhere towards the top. It's a bit like hanging pictures. Um, you know it could flop forward and no one wants a floppy out, do they? I'm managing to catch this around my closure somehow. Let me just rectify that. There we go. I'm getting it in all which ways. Moment. <laughs> there we are. Sorry for knocking the camera. But yeah. And then into the centre, out at the bottom. Three times. One two, three. Then I'm going to wrap it round, take it in, that's got a little knot there and I lose the thread inside, snip it really close and then this is your closure back. Close that up, 
that's all done that's all done we're all finished so yes here is the beauty and here are some of the other ones that i showed you at the beginning let's get the family together shall we <laughs> all different colorways you will see that the metallic thread i chose for these autumnal ones was um gold and bronze so let's pop that there so there we've got a whole set of little owls this one He's more of a dark owl, isn't he? Like a wintry owl. The others are all in the autumnal colours. You could do it in whichever colours you like. You could go neon if you wanted to. Um, but yes, there they all are. I hope you enjoy making your owls. And please do um, send me a message and show me pictures. I am on Instagram, so you could tag me in there if you make one of these and you'd like me to see. Thank you so much. Bye for now.